Hey everybody, it's Brady here from Almost Pro Gaming, and I'm here today to show you my rogue build in Diablo 4, because I absolutely love this game. I love to Diablo 2, have thousands of hours in it. Uh, now I'm going to be putting hundreds, if not thousands of hours into Diablo 4. I've already put at least over 100 in uh, this last week. I took a week off work to play the game, and uh, yeah, I'm... Playing a rogue, I'm level 71, I should be higher, but I've done way more experimenting and I have like three other characters that I've leveled up to like 20 or 30. Um, those are all going to be unique builds as well. But anyways, uh, I'm having a lot of fun coming up with my own builds and I figured I'm going to show them to you guys because I love talking about this game. And uh, yeah, so today I want to show you my flurry poison rogue, which is much different than the twisting blades rogue that we see pretty much every other rogue playing right now everyone that's in the game and all the twitch streamers and all that stuff twisting blades seems to be all the rage right now but i'm here to tell you that it is not the only way to play rogue you can play flurry poison and the, or right now flurry poison yeah it's so good so this build is a very glass cannon feast or famine build uh, you jump into a group, poison them all, lifesteal up, jump into another group, poison them all, lifesteal up, jump into another group, poison them all, lifesteal up. And then every once in a while, when you get surrounded by a million enemies, you just go into this super combo that I discovered and murder everything on screen. Uh, so the build is great at just regular gameplay, killing mobs, going through dungeons. But as you saw at the beginning of the video, it excels at single target damage. You can kill a world boss in like 45 seconds. I would show one in this video, but I'm too lazy to wait around for three hours for a world boss and I want to make this video. Um... But yeah, just trust me, single target damage, this build is amazing. Mob damage, it's very good still. Um, so yeah, overall, just a really good build if you like the Feast or Famine, Glass Cannon type playstyle. Uh, which, speaking of which, do not play this build on Hardcore, or at least I recommend not trying this build on Hardcore, because you're not tanky enough to jump in and... You, like, you will die. I'm not going to lie. Like, you'll see in some of the footage I put, I have a Nightmare Dungeon that I'm running. I think it's, like, tier 23, and I'm only level 70 or 71. Um, I died a couple times in the dungeon, because sometimes you just run into a mob that has the right stats, and it just bad touches you, and you just die instantly. It happens. Um, so you got to pay a lot of attention. Um, but when the build does go off, it goes off and you just feel like a god destroying everything in two seconds and you feel like you're breaking the game with a mechanic that might be intended or might not be intended. I don't know. We'll see. You be the judge. Um, yeah, that's basically the summary. So let's get into the actual stats and stuff. All right, I guess let's start with, uh, the most important part of any build or arguably the most important part, the skill tree, what abilities did I take and why? All right, let's full screen this. Da, 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 da. So we start with Puncture as our generator and also kind of damage, but it's our combo point generator. Also, our energy generator is it's great. So Puncture is you throw those daggers. I've picked the thing where you throw three, three daggers. But if you hit somebody with two blades, it makes them vulnerable. And as you can see, when you're in melee range and you use Puncture, it 100% of the time makes them vulnerable. So because of that, this build can easily proc vulnerable on a single target. So moving into Flurry. Uh, flurry, obviously, damage. And then Flurry, cra each time a Flurry damages a crowd controller vulnerable enemy, you are healed, which will come into play later when I talk about the actual stats on the gear because we do include healing in that. But yeah, this build, like you saw, it's very good at healing. Then we have improved flurry if flurry hits any vulnerable enemy it will make all enemies hit by that cast vulnerable so remember how easy i said it is to get one guy to be vulnerable well yeah now you make the whole group around you vulnerable because you use this to proc your combo points make a guy vulnerable and then this to spread vulnerable to everybody that you hit and also spread poison and murder them um, so that's kind of the main combo is make them vulnerable with this, get your combo points, then unleash your combo points and your poison and vulnerable on everybody around you. Moving on, Shadow Step, we take uh, this thing to reduce the cooldown because Shadow Step is so important to the build to be able to jump around and get your momentum bonus going and also just to keep you safe so you're not in one spot too long where enemies can like group up and murder you. 
We then have the weapon mastery passive because I use swords. So it's just a free 9% increased multiplier. Great, awesome. Moving down, we have smoke grenade. So this actually only recently just got into the build. It was originally dark shroud to make you a little bit tankier so you don't die as easily. But I realized you don't need to be very tanky if you kill stuff fast enough. And smoke grenade is perfect for you jump in with shadow step. Then you smoke grenade the mobs in front of you, which makes you do 15% more damage to them and causes them to not be able to hit you back. They can still move around and stuff. It's like a blind. It's not a stun. So they can move around, but they can't attack you, which is great. That's mainly what you want because you don't want to be one shot from jumping into a crowd of like five elites. Or you would jump in with shadow step and then you smoke grenade a, like the group of them. So you get more damage and they can't hit you. Then you trigger all your poison stuff and then everything just dies. So that's what smoke grenade is for. We also have this to reduce its cooldown because the more smoke grenade is up, the more safe I feel jumping into mobs. If there's a big group of mobs, it, I don't have smoke screen up. I'm not jumping into it. Instead, I'm going to drop my poison trap and run away and let them get knocked down, get slowed, waste some time so that my smoke grenade can come back up. Then I can jump in, get the full combo off again. And then same thing with subverting poison trap because a lot of the times I'll, if I'm fighting a boss or uh, just a big group of mobs that's going to take more than a second to kill, uh, I'll drop this poison trap just to stand in it to get that extra 10% increased poison damage that uh, for enemies that are standing inside my trap. More passives, deal more damage to healthy and injured. Great. 9% uh, the vulnerable enemies, which is really easy to do because like I said, that combo moving down to the imbuement skills. We of course have poison imbuement, uh, critically stri or critical strikes with poison imbued skills deals 75% of the poison damage. This is how you annihilate people. This is a lucky hit. It doubles the amount of poisoning, but I'd rather just consistently go with this because I, I crit more than I lucky hit. Um, but yeah, that, that could be changed, but this is good for now. Uh, and then of course we have deadly venom. Increased poisoning damage. This is supposed to only be 9%, but as you can see, there's a 5 because I have that amulet that gives me plus 2 to this. So it's 15% multiplier for poison damage. Great. Then I have uh, one point in here. Uh, I don't know why. I think I might put this into something else, but you get a little bit of extra attack speed the more people you uh, poison. And I poison a lot of people at once, so that 1% attack speed gets up to 15% very quickly. Um, this one, I originally have points in this. Poison enemies deal 5 less damage. But again, if the enemy's dead, they can't do damage. So I just took points out of this, put it into more stuff for damage, and now I just kill people quicker. So moving down to the ultimate skill tree, we don't have an ultimate. Uh, most good builds don't, to be fair. Um, but that's another topic for another video. So trap mastery, when poison trap or death trap activates, you gain 12% increased critical strike chance against vulnerable. So we just get an extra increased critical strike chance because everybody's always vulnerable with this build we always make people vulnerable so just more damage uh innervation uh lucky hit 10 percent to get eight energy but that's really just to unlock this one non-physical damage you deal has a 15 percent increased lucky hit chance which helps with all that poison damage and proccing our super combo uh second wind every hundred energy you spend you your lucky hit chance goes up by five percent for five seconds eh, it's just extra chances to get that off and then of course we have momentum which is triggered by using uh backstab what is it called shadow step using shadow step and smoke grenade we're able to hit three stacks of momentum very quickly in fights okay so gear again this is not end game gear uh this is very close to end game gear but i need to push for higher numbers because my vulnerable where is it my vulnerable is only at about 200. I'm trying, I would like to get this to about 300 overpower. I don't know why this is so high. It's just, it shouldn't be. And then critical strike damage. I would like to get this to like 200, 250. And then around that, that's probably when this build is going to really shine and do some really high level content. Also, I think this build is going to be one of the better builds for killing Uber Lilith, because as you saw in those previous clips, this build is good with dealing with like hordes and mobs but it is absolutely amazing at destroying single targets like bosses so this build i think is going to be a very good build for killing uber lilith if that's a goal that you have within this game okay so first one we have you gain uh armor when you deal any form of damage very basic you get this from a dungeon um it really helps keep you somewhat tanky uh same thing with the 
gem in there that is 9% damage reduction while control impaired because I noticed the main way you die in this build is when you get CC'd and you don't have any more shadow steps to jump out of CC or there isn't an enemy on your screen to jump to to get out of the CC other than the guy that's CCing you I guess um so yeah these uh topaz are from what I've seen the best because I used to have lifesteal because this build has a lot of lifesteal um but this gem actually helps keep you alive in those shitty situations which were the main ways that I was dying so yeah let's go through all the aspects real quick and then I'll go over the stats so yeah, this just gives you armor, makes it a little bit more survivable, and because you attack really fast, it's really easy to get up to full. Um, same thing with this, basic skills grant 20% damage reduction for 5.5 seconds. This is, you can get one for 2 seconds from a dungeon aspect, but I actually found this on a legendary and upgraded my chest piece with it. Um, but this is also very good. The helmet chest combo with those aspects is what gives you a bunch of tankiness on top of the armor and resistances you already have. But Rogue is very squishy it's not like a barbarian or something that gets that natural 10 percent damage mitigation so you aren't gonna be like tanky quote unquote this is just making you tanky enough that you don't get one shot as often i should state that as often there are gonna be times where fucking guy just bam you just die um but that happens uh, moving on, we have the gauntlets. Now, this one is critical strikes with poison or lucky hit. Critical strikes with poison imbued skills have up to a 10% chance to create a toxic pool that deals X amount of damage, poisoning damage, blah, blah, blah. But that's not the important part. The part that you want is while standing in the pool, your poison imbuement skill has no cooldown and no charge limit. So this aspect is kind of what makes the build work because uh, it's a lucky hit. But guess what? Shadow Step has a 100% lucky hit chance. Um, and then with high enough crit, your Shadow Step will crit, which will trigger this, which will get the poison pool on the ground, which not only does a little bit of extra damage to uh, the enemy standing within it, but the bigger part is while you're standing in it, your poison imbuement has no cooldown, which means you get to keep it up for every attack of flurry instead of just two and then waiting 10 seconds for the cooldown to come up and then being able to go again. No, poison imbuement is almost always, I would say like a 90% uptime, maybe a little less because sometimes you don't get the... A crit on the shadow step or you don't get the lucky hit on the flurry and it just doesn't happen but even then there are built-in fail safes so that your this build isn't completely useless without that combo going off it's just if that combo goes off this build is insane but other than that the build is still good without the super combo so speaking of the super combo let's adjust ahead so this is where you get the poison pool unlimited poison imbuement uh, activation while you're standing on that pool when casting an imbuement skill, you trigger imbuement explosion around yourself, implying the imbuement effects and dealing 904 damage of the same type. So what this means is, is because of this aspect, you get that poison pool, which basically makes your poison imbuement unlimited and spammable. So as fast as animations will allow you to spam this, you can put out 904 damage. So from what I've seen, you can spam it about three or four times per second. So that's like an extra 2000 damage every second. Um, but it feels like a lot more. It, it's probably a lot more. It's, it's weird because not only is it doing that damage by itself, it's also putting on the poison effect again, restacking it and getting them even more poisoned, which is why like for bosses and stuff, you just see like 90% of their health bar just become poison damage. Um, so yeah, this is, these two combined, these two aspects combined with shadow step and decent crit because I have 31% crit. I would like that to be a little bit higher too. Um, this makes this build, like I said, like a somewhere between like 80 to 90% uptime for the super insane stuff that you can do with it. But even if that stuff fails, you still have a uh, momentum, which will, you jump around to people, blah, 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 blah. You do all that stuff and you're great. Uh, so let's continue. I have these unique pants, which I feel like are best in slot. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to replace these because the build just relies too damn much on it. Uh, the main thing here is effects that heal you beyond 100% life grant you a barrier and flurry does heal you by the way. Let me close this flurry uh, each time flurry damages a crowd control or vulnerable enemy and every enemy is vulnerable when we're fighting them. You are healed for 1% of your maximum life up to 12% maximum life. So there's that, but then you add more healing onto it because we get 14% healing from this, 10% healing from this. So we have 
20, 24% on top of that 12%. I'm not sure exactly how the math works, but either way, you heal a fucking lot with this build. And then because you heal a lot, uh, you get a barrier up to 52% of your life as like an overshield if you overheal, which is fucking great because you almost, I'd say like 97% of the time you have barrier uptime with this build, which leads us to uh this aspect deal 30 percent damage increased damage when you have a barrier active um so yeah we have barrier up like 90 percent of the time so why not throw this in for a free 30 percent multiplier uh yeah it's great then for the boots we have shadow step has an additional charge because shadow step is so very important for uh starting the combo between these the poison combo where you can unlimitedly spam poison imbument and just mess people up with it um so that's why you have multiple charges also we go with the momentum uh passive this one right here which is whenever you backstab somebody or daze them so the only way we can proc this is between shadow step and smoke grenade yeah so this is how you get your momentum up and also it's how you jump from group to group to group so you're not staying in one spot and just getting like overwhelmed by the like dozens of monsters that are coming to eat your booty hole so that's why we have this just for the extra charges of shadow step i rarely get the second part off where you kill somebody and it refunds the charge when it happens it's really cool it makes you feel like katarina from league of legends but it's uh yeah it's mainly just to give you the extra charge then we have the bow which because it's a two-handed weapon, it gives the best bonus. I put the flurry on here, thinking that would be best. But in hindsight, I think barrier might be better on the weapon. These two could be changeable, I'm not sure. Because this build isn't finished, I'm still optimizing it and changing it. And even up till yesterday, I had like a different ability on my W, but I found that Daze is just absolutely so good with this build. So yeah, flurry, obviously, because you're a flurry build, you want to spread it around to a billion people. When you trigger an imbuement, uh, right, nope, that's the other one. Your imbuement skills have 26% increased potency against vulnerable, which is great because as I explained before, vulnerable gets spread to everybody and it just destroys everybody. Um, and then on the daggers, attacking with a basic skill increases your core skill, which is great because we're using combo points. And I generally like to auto attack three times, or I guess auto attack. I like to puncture three times before using flurry which means that this will give me 18% extra damage for that flurry almost every time. Um, and then there's some times where you're like out of energy, so you're just spamming that left click and you'll get it up to 30 and you'll just do a big blast at the end. It's great. Uh, and then finally, we have Lucky Hit. Making an enemy vulnerable has up to a 38% chance to grant 3% increased critical strike for 3 seconds up to 9%. To be honest, I'm not sure how much this actually makes a play, but my lucky hit isn't that bad vulnerable uptime is great because it's so easy to proc um and the crit chance is just good because that's what enables this super combo to go off so now that we have that let's talk about the stats that i've been looking for so because of how easy it is to make everybody vulnerable vulnerable damage great absolutely amazing uh and then uh, crit damage. So because a lot of the stuff works off of crits, I want crit attack, crit damage, and vulnerable damage. And then those state vulnerable damage and crit damage multiply against each other, which makes very big numbers, very big, big numbers. So that's why I picked those two. Because for those of you who don't know the damage stats in this game, they're called like damage buckets. There's a video by Kriparian. He explains it very well. Maybe I'll link it down in the description if you're interested. Um, but yeah, you want to pick different stats from different damage buckets. And those are the ones that I went with was crit damage, uh, crit chance, which are both part of the same bucket, but they work together and then uh, vulnerable damage. And then of course there's always, there's random stuff in there. Like I have healing on my helmet and pants because you need healing for this build uh, i have lots of plus ranks to like poison imbuement or where's this one this one's great plus two ranks to deadly venom which is what makes the poison just fucking do so much damage um but yeah so obviously plus the skills for like poison imbuement flurry and that poison passive those are the best in my opinion to get extra ranks into um, they're going to give you the most bang for your buck. Other than that, you don't really care about extra points in like Shadow Step or any of this other stuff. It's really extra points in Poison Imbuement, uh, extra points in Deadly Ven Venom, which is a passive for the Poison Imbuement. Imbuement? God, I can't speak. And then, of course, extra points in Flurry because that's your main source of damage. And then we have a little bit of healing 
Uh, not much. 20% seems to be all right on top of the uh, effect that you get from this. Plus, there's also that lucky hit on this, too. Up to 5% chance to just, like, go to full health. That's really nice when that happens. Doesn't happen a lot, but when it does, it's great. Um, so, yeah, again, for this build, if you're going to try to mimic it and do it yourself, you want vulnerable damage, crit, stri or crit chance, crit damage, and healing. And then, obviously, like, attack speed helps a lot. Um... Resistances are okay. Armor is okay. But yeah. So now I guess with that out of right, the way. So last thing. I only have three Paragon boards so far. Uh, I'm not entirely sure where I'm going in the future. Right now I'm just filling up intelligence nodes for this thing. But we started out here. Went this way. Blah, 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 get some extra damage and stuff. And then we took this glyph. Which is 80% bonus to all rare nodes in range. Imbuement skills have 20% increased potency. So just more poison damage. More damage. More poison damage. And then that 80% buff because I got enough intelligence within the area. Gives more damage in decks. And more armor and decks. Uh, so yeah. Makes you tankier. Just good overall. Following this path up. We branched out this way first. To go get this which is uh, poisoning damage effects last 33% longer, which is great. And then for every five intelligence within range, you deal 6.3% increased damage to poison targets. So yeah, just more damage. Uh, this thing took this rare node because vulnerable damage, because why the hell not? Same thing with over here. We got a bunch of vulnerable damage, vulnerable damage. And then moving up all the way over here, we actually took the legendary node, which is whenever you deal damage to a vulnerable enemy, they take 1% increased damage from you for six seconds up to 15%. Um, and this is a multiplier for every other number in your build, I'm pretty sure. So this thing just makes everything, like add everything else up from your build and then multiply it by this. That's what this is, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, that's what I think that is. So then we went up this way just to go grab this because I wanted more damage to elites because why the hell not? And then ran over here and grabbed this glyph, which is for every five intelligence purchase within range, core skills deal increased critical strike damage. And then skills that critically strike restore 12% of the energy cost. Uh, I haven't fully maxed this one out yet. As you can see, I need one more Paragon point. And then after this, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to take these. What I think is, depending on whatever's closer, I might go this way or this way. I think this is closer just by looking. And then make a new Paragon board here. And I'm not sure what I would even do with it yet, but we'll figure that out when we get there. But for now, this build is good enough. Oh, the other thing I could do is there's a board. Where is it? But I think the other board I want, I don't even want a glyph. I want uh, the legendary node. I forget what it does, but it's something to do with poison again. But I might take a, a paragon board just to get access to that legendary node. I might not even care about the glyph. Because like, especially with this, something that a, a quick tip that I've noticed, and I could be wrong on this, but everyone's still learning. When you have a board like this, where your legendary node is on the opposite side from the glyph, just go in, get your glyph, and then th that's it. If you want your legendary node, I should have flipped it and gone this way and then just never went to this glyph. Found a quicker path somewhere to get to another glyph. Um, but yeah, so I guess that's pretty much the build. You run around, you poison shit, you murder mobs, and you absolutely destroy bosses. Like, single target is just no problem. You just murder everybody. Um, so I guess that's it for the video. If you enjoyed it and want to see more Diablo content like this, more build guides, more stuff, uh, subscribe to the channel and, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Happy. And I almost said happy wargaming. God, that's an old habit that dies hard. Um, all right. Have a good one guys.